Hi there, I am making my final video for Resident Evil Resistance on this channel uh, to sort of cap off my time playing this game and I figured that as I'm going to be doing this I might as well go over the builds I've been using for you know people who want to play creatures at like a decently high level I've gotten pretty good results with these builds and I think that other people can too I'll start with the net I've used Annette, Daniel, and Creature Nikolai <laughs> over the course of the last six months, and I've gotten at least decent results with each of them. Uh, and teams are obviously very, very challenging to beat in this game, but figured I might as well go over what I've been using on each of the three masterminds I've been using the most in recent months. So I use Fury on G Birkin now. Some people like to use Beastmaster, uh, and I can see the utility in being able to spawn a zom zombie dog near Birkin every 15 seconds, but I personally prefer, prefer Fury because what will happen is that oftentimes if you're up against a survivor team, you know, and you if you drop Birkin and you got a horde around him, which is how you should be using him, uh, the survivors will often... Uh, focus the zombies and try to take, take them down very quickly. Uh, so if they succeed in, you know, incapacitating your zombies or making it so that you're not going to get a lot of mileage after you've dropped Birkin, you can use Fury, cancel out, and get better cool down towards your next drop so that you can keep dropping him when you need him uh, to protect your creatures. Using him, in, like, together with buffed up hordes, definitely the way to go with this build. Uh, I've got defense, uh, which reduces buffs or which reduces the damage on you know, taken for, by creatures when they've got buff. So obviously, if you use all four buffs, that'll substantially reduce the amount of damage that they take. And then enhancement to greatly increase creature HP. Uh, there's other builds you can run uh, with the net uh, creature efficiency, ambush, epsilon, but I personally think defense enhancement is the way to go with her. You want to compete against teams at like a decently high level. Uh, now we get into special cards. I use ambush, obviously free zombie, very useful, and I use tough zombie times two card, uh, which gets you decent bang for your buck. You can use either this or like a regen aura. Both will be able to give you decent benefit. Uh, the tough zombies in particular, if you have them put down and you have them all buffed up they will have a very very large HP pool very hard to kill um, with all the buffs on so you know you definitely will get good mileage out of this car if you know how to use it you just need to make sure that ideally ideally you're uh, you've, you're using it under discount effect so it only costs three now when it comes to the deck itself it's a pretty standard creature deck zombie times two Partially Armored Zombie, Posture Zombie. They all provide good value in their own ways. In general, the better thing to do is to possess these and these creatures here. The Zombie Times 2, Partially Armored. Possess those, and you have the Imposter backing you up. Imposters give you very good value. Um, you know, even when they are possessed, they're very aggressive. And if they're under, you know, Berserker uh, effects, they can definitely... They can definitely be very aggressive and and uh, it can definitely apply pressure on survivors for sure. Uh, obviously, you're using all four of the enhancing papers. Uh, because this is defense enhancement, you definitely want to make sure that your zombies are buffed up. Even And it may seem weird that there are only three creature cards in deck, but keep in mind that there's the two special cards that you have later on. And there's also this card, Quick Draw, which lets you discard all your non-mod cards and draw new ones. So because I've only got one mod, you're drawing three new cards. And pretty much this card is this card is what what can really make this build work in an efficient manner because the deal is you let's say you have like a bunch of vapors in your hand or whatever. Let's say you have two vapors and no creatures down. And the efficiency mod pop quick draw now all of a sudden you get like a disc 
and discount and like two creatures now you're in business now you can use discount and now at that point poster only costs one partially armor costs two Zomb the zombie times two card only costs one and each of the vapors costs one you just need to be very very careful about managing your bioenergy and ideally trying to keep it at like a good level and if you have to give up objectives if you're skill costed or whatever that's uh, that's fine um as long as you're building up ideally to like eight or more uh, eight or more bioenergy so you can pop discount and get good mileage out of it and for the equipment on that i think you need viral canister three in my opinion to help balance out the fact that your your creatures are going to feed time uh, in the deck that I have, all these creatures only feed 5 seconds. But the problem is, is that you're going to have a lot of these things that are going to be killed over the course of the match. So, with the goal of the game being to get the survivors minus 5 minutes and then through overtime, you're going to need Infection and Vile Canister 3 to help cancel out the, the time that will be added when, when they're killing the creatures because the creatures will die to some extent if you're playing up against a good team. Uh, I like to use Researcher's Brain uh, for second equipment. It's pretty good. Increases the creature movement speed and max health both moderately. Very, very, good, uh, very good equipment to have. Resilient Skin 3, obviously... You get defense enhancement and the buffs, and you add resilience and skin three on top of researcher's brain, and your zombies will be pretty tough to kill as long as you keep them buffed up. Uh, and then you get bioenergy tank one, which is a very very nice bit of equipment. Uh, Martly increases your bioenergy cap, goes to fourteen instead of ten, which matters a lot actually because that means that. If you drop, if you get out Birkin, for example, and you get skill costed, which is something that is very common, you'll often be at like high bioenergy, like eight or nine or something like that. This allows you to just wait, continue collecting bioenergy instead of getting capped at 10 and actually make good use of that extra, that extra capacity. So that's a build that I have on the net. Now we shall talk about Daniel, who of my masterminds probably performed the best out of I have the three that main ones I've used. Uh, so my build on Daniel has a bit of everything. So we start with brutality, uh, increase the hook punch speed and damage is very standard on May Daniel builds. Uh, rend greatly increases grab attack damage dealt by controllable creatures. And this actually works super duper well in, uh, when you combine it with the remote shell, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, endurance. Uh, now, a lot of people don't like using Endurance because the Kashima is in the game and you get Flash and all this other stuff, but being, being immune to like most, uh, most stuns from like guns and things like that is very, very nice. Also, it works pretty well with uh, how I see the game. Uh, the big thing is that you're going to have to play it doors. And, like, you can't try to, like... You can't try to come at them from, like, a distance or whatever. You're going to get... You're going to get killed before you can get to them and get the bite off. Um, Overclock. Now, this card... I mean... It's a very... It's a great card. There's n not really much I can say. Immediately gains bioenergy. Um, now this card, when you combine it with clone under discount effects, you can immediately get six bioenergy for a cost of nothing, which is very, very helpful, without a doubt. Then the remote shell, this might be the best creature card in the game because, uh, obviously you can see sp spawns a zombie with all creature buff effects and greatly increased attack power and health does not act while unless controlled, cannot be killed while inactive. Which is really helpful because, you know, if you've got a situation where you're getting flashed a lot or whatever, like, you can just go in uh, and then possess the remote shell, it will get up because it's invincible, and then it'll start, and it'll start being able to play work for you. 
the other thing too is that uh, because I'm running Rend with this, uh, the bites, like bite damage that one of these things will do, goes up to about like 780. I think it was like 787 damage last I checked, which is most of the health bar of most of all survivors. <laughs> you know, you can you can down people. You know, from what they thought was like decently high health and caution, and that can really help to uh, turn a game in your favor. Now we we'll go on to the deck. Now this deck, I've gone back and forth about a couple things, but in general, the way I see it is that there are these two zombies here, the act and partially armored that you want to possess, and then you have the dog and the imposter zombie that are supporting that are supporting whatever possessed creature you put down and ideally you don't put put down like a bunch of creatures at once i do it unless you're like preparing to you know drop your bioweapon you get the like if you're getting ready to get the tyrant then you know you can put like eight creatures down or whatever near an objective and then when the survivors encounter it try to spring the trap on them, so to speak but in general, you want to spread out your zombies so that you can possess as many of them as possible and get uh, as much use out of them as you can. And I like using Berserker and Infection Vapes because uh, with Overclock and Clone put together, uh, bioenergy you can do pretty well with uh, without the Energy Leech Vape. Even though it, having the Energy Leech Vape is really nice, having uh, Berserk and Infectious Creatures uh, backing up your main creature which are one you're possessing is very very useful uh obviously creature mod useful card discount uh as uh as was true with the net reduce reduces the cost of all of these to one except for this which it would cost two and then quick draw again allows you to cy cycle your hands bare and get you more towards the cards you want very nice thing to have and I have the same equipment same equipment on Daniel that I do with the net um, again you you need viral canister 3 in order to make it so that you're getting more coughs out of the survivors because each cough is five seconds and if all of your creatures are, are five seconds or less it's very hard for them to come out positive on time and obviously, if you get bites and swipes off and stuff, that will lower their time even more. Uh, very good to have frog cancer through with infectious creatures for sure. Um, resilient skin, research of brain, bioenergy tank. I'm, I've already gone over why these are good with the net, but the other thing too is with Daniel. Uh, if he's trying to like get a bite off or whatever, having that extra bit of health can make it so that it's more likely that your bites will go through and you can take that extra bit of damage and still get it off before getting killed another important thing to note with daniel is that uh because you are running viral canister three that will uh act if you have like a zombie that you are possessing and it's infected and you get kashima the survivors will be taking infection while they're getting close to you to do that and to hit you and all that stuff so this can help to at least alleviate some of the time gain that, that they would be getting otherwise uh, you just gotta make sure that uh, that you get the infection onto your creatures uh, now for the last mastermind that I've been using to like and I what decent extent is uh, Nikolai so Nikolai I use only creatures no guns um, so for our skill on nemesis we use extermination render him invincible increase the amount of damage his rocket deals very good for gang downs and putting a lot of pressure on teams for sure you will know, exterminate through flashes and you know other things that might stun you uh, can definitely swing a game uh, for sure um, some people use relentless but I think that in general that uh, being able to 
deal with those stuns and being able to have a rocket that does more damage is really nice. Now we use UBCS monitor. Uh, track survivors being attacked by creatures and lowers their attack power. Really, really nice uh, skill to have here. You know, if you get a couple swipes off or whatever, uh, survivors will automatically be tracked and this will kick in. And you'll be able to uh, have zombies that are a little harder to deal with. Now, bring in Watchdog. I don't, I don't use any guns, uh, but I just have Watchdog just in case I get like a random grenade launcher out of a supply zombie or something. Uh, got Rare Pulse, which works very well with you, BCS monitor. Uh, you pair the two together. Uh, you track the survivors, and then you lower their attack power with this. You can definitely, definitely uh, make make. Put in some good work with your creatures uh, when you have both those things together. Now, um, I have Tactical Shields as my special card. Uh, because I run no guns, you can do either that or the Reinforced Leg Hold Trap. Either are very good, uh, and I tend to cycle away from whichever of those two cards I have here. Because Tactical Shields pauses your bio energy, and Reinforced Leg Hold Trap costs four, which is a lot. Uh, when it comes to the deck, uh, it's kind of a mix of things that I've run with our masterminds. So I have the three vapors, uh, Berserker, Infection, and Energy Leech. Uh, I have the Efficiency Mod for Creatures, uh, Zombie Dog, and the Imposter Zombie, again, as like kind of supporting creatures for whichever creature you're possessing. And you possess uh, either like a normal zombie or partially armored. And you have these guys backing you up, and you can do some work with it. I've had some decent success of beating a few teams uh, with this. Now, you obviously need to get quick draw, use quick draw wisely, and cycle a discount so that you can put down zombies for low cost, or put well creatures in general for low cost, and then buff them up, uh, all for the cost of one buff each. Uh, the more swipes and bites you get off, the better your bioenergy you you'll you'll have, and then you'll be able to, you know, get more use out of that uh, enhancing vapor energy leech. Big thing is that you have to be careful about placing your zombies. You have to put them, you know, behind locked doors, around corners, things like that, to make them hard to deal with. Um, not just make them, you know, easy targets. Now, for the equipment, it's the same that I run on the Air Masterminds. I'll cancel three again to reduce the amount of time that I'm feeding. Uh, Researcher's Brain to increase the movement speed and max health. Brazilian, Brazilian Skin 3 to increase the overall health. And Bioenergy Tank 1 uh, so that your bioenergy game is in better shape generally. It's important to note that, you know, kind of the overall strategy here. Oh, with Nikolai is that like the creatures against teams aren't really going to by themselves be able to win you the game but you know they can you know make things harder on the survivors and if you see you're gonna get nemesis soon like within a handful of seconds or whatever and you've got like a lot of bio energy that's where you can just go pop discount fill a room with like eight creatures or something like that all buffed up uh, and then you go pop your radar pulse and then when uh, the survivors encounter the horde drop nemesis and then things get extremely dangerous for them uh, for sure even if Tyrone pops a safeguard it's only going to be there for a limited time and then once it wears off then uh, you can really go out of town on them so I guess at this point I will uh, discuss my closing thoughts on this game and you know the people that i played it with over the last you know several months uh i guess i guess just in general i think the thing that i dislike the most about this game is the fact that if you're trying to be like if you're trying to be like competitive at this game if you're trying to play like the best teams you know, and you're trying to be, if you're trying to win against them to any, like, decently consistent extent, like, the game really encourages you to play either Trap Alex, 
uh, Gun Nikolai, or, or Terminal Spencer, or Infection Mod Alex uh, for 4-3, but in general, like, running standard creature builds, and, like, it's just not... It, it's just not really viable at like the highest levels of this game and that's really unfortunate you know I, the, the fact is is that there's way more counters you know melee constant flashes you know damage all of these things the kashima you know there's way more counters to you know creatures in general than there is to you know camera builds you know alex uh, trap alex terminal spencer you know Quick Guns Nikolai, all that other stuff. And I wish that the game didn't encourage you to play those builds because, you know, at, at least in my opinion, creatures are like the most fun to fight, right? And at least in my opinion, you know, it it would be cool if, you know, it, like creatures were like the best. But instead, like in the meta of this game, they ended up being, you know, kind of left behind, which is pretty unfortunate. But just kind of the way it goes um and if the game were you know a little bit better balanced where creatures had more of a place in the meta and they were a bit better you know maybe i'd still be playing it but sometimes that's just the way it goes um and i guess uh i guess i'll close you know discussing you know, some of the people that I've played, you know, this game alongside and played against in a lot of instances. You know, I my first shout out, you know, definitely is going to go to uh, Jared James, who brought me on to my first team. Um, it was with him and E. Coco and uh, LaCree. It was, it was a fun getting to play with all of them, getting to play with uh, Troop. And Aqua, you know, at times in the past. And then, eventually, Secret Ninja was brought on. Met Bacon, uh, Bacon and Grits and Cody Lodi. You know, and all, and, you know, getting to play with all, all of them was great. And then eventually, going on and, you know, forming the Alpha Chat. You know, and bringing in all kinds of different people from all sorts of different teams. And, you know, getting to play with a bunch of them. It was a... Uh, it was a cool time. I don't regret any of the time that I put into this game at all. I played over 4,000 matches. Uh, like, two th like almost 2,200 Survivor and, and like over 1,800 Mastermind, if I remember right. Uh, definitely enjoyed all of that. Definitely enjoyed playing with anybody or with anybody and everybody from, you know, Alpha Chat and from those teams that I played it, played with in the past. Um, you know, whether, uh, whether you've played, you know, with me or against me, you know, I hope that, uh, I hope that the games were enjoyable, you know, and, uh, I'd like to think I gave people at least, like, some kind of decent challenge with creatures. You know, they, they may be a bit underpowered, but you know what, you know, every now and then they can still do it. You know, and, and that, for anybody that, you know, wants to play creatures at, like, a decently high level, you know, going forward and all that, you know, I wish you the best of luck, because it is not easy to do that against a lot of these teams, that's for, uh, that's for damn sure. Um, thank you for watching this, uh, video to the end, you know, I've had a great time playing this game, playing with all these people and all this stuff, and I'll never forget it, um... When it comes to the uploads and, you know, other things I'll be doing with this YouTube channel, I have no idea, you know. Time will tell if, you know, I decide to start, you know, uploading videos from playing other games on here or not. But, either way, I wish you all the best. And thank you all for watching the video to the end. It's been a cool ride, and, uh, those of you that still want to play this game, you know, I wish you the best of luck with it.